In this video, we're going to take a look at creating a bubble windscreen using Fusion 360 surfaces. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this part in our Surfacing Mastery series, we're going to tackle one of the comments that came in, and it was about creating this sort of bubble windscreen, and this was on a sort of um, sci-fi type racer. And what we're going to do is we're just going to talk about one of the ways in which we can do this. There are obviously many different ways that we can approach these types of designs, but this is a particularly tricky one because we not only have to worry about tangency going across the midline, but also trying to keep this sort of bubble shape. So there are a couple different pieces that we need to think about. But the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the starting point. Now, I just built a very quick sort of chassis and trim ring for this. And if you want to follow along, you can go to the description of the video and download this data set. But what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a couple of tools, a couple of things that we want in order to make this shape. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take this trim ring piece that I created, and this is a solid body. We're going to hide the main body, and we're going to focus our attention just on this piece. Now, this piece currently has a single surface on the bottom, and then it has a different edge layout. You can see here that the edge is broken up into two. But what we want to do is we want to split this right in the middle. Now, I'm going to do this by going to Modify, Split Face, and I want to split this bottom face. And then the splitting tool is going to be that mid plane. In this case, it's XZ for this model. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to break this edge up so that I can focus on creating just half of the model. Anytime a design has symmetry, I like to focus on making the least amount of surfaces possible and then mirror them or pattern them as needed. So now that we have this piece of the puzzle, what we need to do is we need to create that midline profile that we're going to use. So I'm going to start by creating a sketch. Once again, I'm going to use this midline. I'm going to use slice, which is a temporary section view in our sketch, and then create, project, include, and intersect. I'm going to grab the intersection of that bottom face. I could also project that split edge, and it would give me the same result. So here you can see we now have this bottom edge and this intersection point. Now for the design that I'm creating, I'm not worried about matching this vertical edge on this trim piece. I'm going to assume that we're creating a surface that gets sandwiched between this and the rest of the design, in this case, the, the chassis. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a spline going from this point. And you'll notice that I have 3D Sketch turned on. That's fine in this case, because I'm actually gonna stick to this mid plane. But I have 3D Sketch turned on. I'm just going to go ahead and find a point in space where I want the windscreen to end and then click the green check mark and hit escape to get off that tool. Now, even if we have a 3D Sketch turned on, this spline is in 2D until we move it into 3D. Now, 3D sketching can be turned on or off in Fusion 360, and there's not really any way to easily sketch in 3D without selecting points that already exist in 3D. So for us, all I need to do is manipulate the handle to create the shape I want. I'm gonna make this a little bit different than the one I showed you in the previous example. So I'm gonna have it sort of sweep back a little bit more, and I can maybe pull this up a little bit more as well. So I'm gonna finish the sketch, and now I'm going to go to my surface tools and I'm going to extrude this. Now, while the extrusion step isn't strictly necessary, it is helpful for what we're doing for two different reasons. One, when we have an extrusion, we can create a surface that has tangency. If we just have an edge there, we can give it a direction. And theoretically, that is going to give you the same result. However, the second point of this is that now we've got this edge which when we create our 3D curve, in this case, it's gonna be an arc, that will give us a tangency reference. So now that we have this, we've got the center line, we've got this bottom edge and this back section here, we now wanna create a curve that goes from this point to this point in 3D space. We could create a plane and we could, you know, sort of figure out the where that plane is going to lie by creating a plane based on three points. It would be this point, that point, and then the one that matches on the other side. And that would give us a plane that would allow us to create this curve. However, this edge isn't going to lie on that plane. And that's where the trick comes. So we're going to start a new sketch. You can pick any plane you want. It doesn't really matter. But we want to make sure that 3D sketch is turned on. This is going to be the important bit here. And then we're going to go to create 
arc and a three point arc. And when we do this in a 3D sketch, we'll be able to select that point and we can select this point. And I'm just gonna start to drag this arc into 3D space, right click and say, okay. Now that arc is not where I want it, but I can use tangency between that and this back edge. And now I've driven that arc, even though it doesn't look to be fully defined, its endpoints are defined by points that lie on what will be our boundary curve. And it has tangency based on that back edge. When we're in a 3D sketch, it'll automatically project those edges for us. You can also go to create, project include, and include 3D geometry for specific entities you wanna bring in. But I've noticed that at least recently in Fusion 360, those have come in by default and I haven't had to use that option. If you don't see them coming in by default, it's possible that in your user preferences, there's a setting to toggle that on and off. Again, I don't generally customize Fusion because it complicates making videos. So these are things that I've noticed recently have started working by default. So now we're gonna finish this sketch and we've got everything we need to define that shape. So I'm gonna use a patch and I know I've done several recent videos that were talking about patch versus loft and, and when we should use them and when we shouldn't. This is a case where patch is gonna give us a better result but you can still try to use loft. Just remember that we're gonna have that degenerate point that happens at the intersection of these two edges. So for us, patch, we're gonna make sure that we turn off enable chaining because we only want a single edge here. This edge, we're gonna carry that down to the bottom and then the 3D arc. Now at this point, we wanna make sure that group edges is not turned on and that edge four, we're gonna find edge four and that we do have tangency that goes across that midline. That tangency is important because that means when we mirror this to the other side, that we will be able to perfectly match that geometry. So we'll say, okay. And now the extrusion that we used in the middle, this is body 13. I can right click and remove it because I no longer need it. Then what I wanna do is create a mirror. We're gonna mirror this body about that mid plane. I'm gonna allow it to join, which will automatically stitch those two together. And if we want to include this bottom face here, we can go to create and create an offset of that face. And in this case, we'll do zero millimeters. So if I hide the solid body, I now have this surface, which can be stitched together. And then we can try to thicken these. So I'm gonna go to create, thicken. We wanna make sure that we select the entire body. And I'm gonna thicken this in both directions, symmetric, and I'm gonna say half a millimeter. So now it's gonna build it out in both directions. We'll say, okay. And if we bring back our solid body, those are gonna overlap now, but just note that we could thicken it in a single direction. And I chose to do it in both directions just to see if it would work. We can choose to thicken one direction or the other. In this case, because it's just a concept, I'm not too worried about it. Now I'm gonna use my appearances, which is A on the keyboard, or we can just select this, right click, and we can go to appearances. You can also use physical material. I'm gonna use a polycarbonate, which is found under plastic. You can scroll down to transparent and find polycarbonate. And from here, I'm gonna right click on polycarbonate and make an edit. I'm gonna just make it a little bit more tinted. So I'm bring it down to a darker color and we'll close that. And then I'm gonna go from my design to my render workspace. So here you can see that the reflections go very nicely across the middle. We're not really seeing any weird reflection happen. I can go into my scene, change the environment to something like a grid light. And now we can rotate it so that the grid light goes across that middle section. And you can see that we're not really seeing any issues with that. So this is perfect. This gives us the geometry that we're looking for. From the side, everything looks pretty good. Because we thickened it, we can see that it's going out normal to the curvature direction. And this gives us a really good result. So as I mentioned at the start, there are multiple ways that we can do something like this. This is by no means the only way, but you can play around with the, the same inputs and you can use a loft and you can see what the result looks like. You can also build this out as the entire piece without using that midline. But I do think it's important if you do build it in symmetry that you consider using an extruded midline for tangency, not only for the, in this case, the patch that we created, but also for that back edge curve, because we were able to use the back edge of the extrude as a tangent direction for that arc. That's also important if you're using something like a spline as well. 
So if you have any questions on this, please let me know. And just like I asked of everybody in a post and in these videos, if you have anything that you're struggling with, with surfaces or with any other type of modeling, please let me know. You can always send me an email. And if I have time and am able to create a video on it, I can certainly do that. The past several have all been based on questions and comments that have come in. And the next few videos that I have planned are also based on those comments and questions. So if you have anything that you're struggling with, any challenges with Fusion 360, uh, please let me know and I'm happy to try and help. So if you have any questions, leave them in the video below. And as always, thanks for watching. And we'll see you in the next one.